Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. So for today's video, we will talk about hepatitis on medical surgical nursing in which we will try to discuss about the different types of hepatitis. So this includes uh, manifestations. So these are the signs and symptoms. The pathophysiology of viral hepatitis and its management and diagnosis for hepatitis. So before we continue this video, I would like to say sorry on my behalf for all the unnecessary noises because those are just things that are beyond my control. But I will assure you that you will learn a lot from this video. So guys, for us to understand what is truly hepatitis, it is important that one must have basic understanding on the concept of liver. This includes its function, so that you will know why there is such occurrence of manifestation of hepatitis occurred. So, as we all know, liver can be found on the right upper quadrant of the abdomen, in which it serves multiple functions in a human body. So, these functions include filter blood waste, production of bile, in which it is stored in the gallbladder, and production of bilirubin. So how does this happen? Firstly, they filter our blood. As red blood cells reach nearly end of its lifespan, in which around 120 days, they are eaten up or phagocytized by macrophages in the reticuloendothelial system or also known as the macrophage system where the spleen is made up of the largest part but it is also made up of the lymph nodes so okay as red blood cells are eaten up the hemoglobin in the red blood cells or in the RBC are broken down into hem and globin the globin is further broken down into amino acid and the hem on the other hand are split into iron and protoporphin. The protoporphin is then will be converted into unconjugated bilirubin, in which it is a form of bilirubin that is as lipid soluble. Again, it is a lipid soluble. And then this unconjugated bilirubin will then binds to the albumin in the blood, in which it will be carried to the liver. The hepatocytes will conjugate the unconjugated bilirubin by the help of uridine glucuronyl transferase, making it now a water soluble. So at this point, it will be secreted out in the bile caniculi and drains into the bile duct and will be stored in the gallbladder as a bile. So our liver is also responsible in the production of clotting factors proteins, albumins, fats, and cholesterol. So they also help in removing the ammonia in the body and in breaking down the glycogen into glucose. Now knowing this function, it will be our pillar in understanding hepatitis. So what is hepatitis? From its etymological name that came from two great words which are hepa or hepar or hepat which means liver and then itis means inflammation. So we can conclude that hepatitis is characterized by inflammation of the liver and then there is presence of necrosis on the hepatocytes. Later as we will discuss on the pathophysiology of viral hepatitis you will know why there is such occurrence of necrosis on the hepatic cells. Severity of symptoms may vary from client to client. The onset of symptoms also varies according to the incubation period of the specific virus that causes the hepat hepatitis. Okay, moving on, there are different types of hepatitis depending to its cause. One is viral hepatitis, in which it is the most common type of hepatitis, caused by one of several viruses, which are hepatitis virus A, B, C, D, or E. 
The other type is alcoholic hepatitis, which is caused by excessive heavy alcohol use. The alcohol directly injures the cell of the liver, and over time it can cause permanent damage and can lead to liver failure or cirrhosis, a thickening and scarring of the liver. The next type that we have is toxic hepatitis which is caused by certain poisons, chemicals, medicines, or supplements. The action of alcoholic hepatitis and toxic hepatitis are similar in a way that they damage the hepatic cells directly. That's why in some sources they are classified as one type of non-infectious hepatitis. The last type of hepatitis is autoimmune hepatitis. It is a chronic type in which the body's immune system attacks its own liver. The cause is not known but genetics and the environment play a major role. But for this video, we will discuss more on the side of viral hepatitis. Since we are covering on the infectious side of medical surgical nursing caused by viruses. As implied to its name, viral hepatitis are caused by virus, in which most common causative of viral hepatitis are hepatitis A, B, C, D, or E viruses. Aside from these mentioned viruses, there are also other viruses that can cause viral hepatitis. These are cytomegalovirus or CMV, the Epstein-Barr virus, the EBV, or the herpes simplex virus, the HSV. In terms of transmission of this virus, there are two main identified routes for transmission, the picooral route and the parental, parental route. So for us to deeply understand what is picooral route, we can describe it by presenting a situation. Let's say an infected person with viral hepatitis works in a restaurant and then this person was in badly needed to defecate. He then excretes his feces. The virus itself are carried in the stool. Then this person come in contact with its feces. He will then transfer the virus to the food as he prepare meal to another customer. So the customer consume the infected food will be then classified as a new infected person with viral hepatitis. For the parental route in which there is no involvement of human gut in the process, so this means this can be transferred via intravenous, subcutaneous, or intramuscular. This can be in the form of sex or contacted to uninfected blood or simply there is an exchange of bodily fluids. What you can see on the screen are the clinical manifestations of hepatitis. So these are the classical signs and symptoms present to a person who have hepatitis. These are jaundice, there is yellowing of the sclera of the eyes and skin, fever, nausea and vomiting, fatigue, joint pain and loss of appetite which are general immune response to viremia, darker urine and the clay or gray colored stool. So you will know more about this as we discuss the pathophysiology of viral hepatitis. Manifestations of signs and symptoms of hepatitis can be divided into different phases. The first phase we have is the pre-ecteric phase or also called as the prodromal phase. This is the period of maximal infectivity. Circulating immune complexes may cause fatigue, anemia, anorexia, depression, headache, weight loss, muscle pain, nausea, vomiting, changes in the taste and smell, and fever. So there is also the presence of right upper quadrant abdominal tenderness may be noted.
To put it in a simpler term, this phase refers to the body's immune response to viremia. Viremia is the uh, presence of an infection within the blood. Moving on to the second stage which is the ecteric phase or also known as the clinical stage. So this phase is actually the phase where there is liver damage characterized by jaundice. There is a uh, defective uptake of conjugation and or distribution of bile. So bilirubin is diffusing into the tissues that already explain the presence of jaundice. Urine, dark, urine is darker, stool are clay colored, persistent fatigue, liver is enlarged and tender. Moving on to the last stage which is the post ecteric phase or the recovery stage. Other books uh, describe it as a convalescent phase. So jaundice is disappearing but it does not mean recovery. It may last weeks to months depending on the virus that causes the viral hepatitis. Going back to viral hepatitis, hepatitis A is caused by infection with the hepatitis A virus or HAV. So this type of virus is an RNA type of virus. Well, in terms of transmission of this virus, this can be transmitted through fecal oral route. Once an infection kicks in with hepatitis A, this virus can occur acute only since the body's immune system can help to recover from the infection. The diagnosis for hepatitis A, blood studies will be able to help in determining the presence of infections. So what we are looking for uh, uh, markers such as immunoglobulin M in which indicates that there is present infection of HIV whereas if there is presence of immuno immunoglobulin G it means uh, that the patient was recovered from uh, such infection. The treatment for HIV is supportive therapy since the virus occurs acute only. So there is no need for antivirals medication. For preventions of hepatitis A virus, gladly we have vaccine for HIV. Hand washing can also help in uh, decreasing the chances of acquiring such uh, or transmitting the virus to one another to one person to another. And immune globulin after time of exposure. Moving on, hepatitis B is transmitted through contact with infectious body fluids, such as blood, vaginal secretions, or semen, in which it could uh, contains the hepatitis B virus. So this type of virus is a DNA type of virus. Occurrence of infection for HBV can occur acute and chronic so it can be transferred to infant during pregnancy that's why during the lecture on maternal and child it is important that the mothers are being tested for hepatitis b virus to prevent the transmission for the diagnostic hb sag if there is presence of hb sag in the blood it means that there is positive infection Presence of anti-HBS, which means that the patient recovered from the infection. Now that is for acute. Treatment for uh, hepatitis B virus, once it is an acute hepatitis B virus, uh, we will only give a supportive therapy. So on the later part of this video, you will know what are these supportive therapy that we are talking about. So for chronic hepatitis B virus, we can uh, they are prescribed to have an antiviral or an interferon. For prevention, yes, we have vaccine for HBV. Hand washing can also help 
and immune globulin can also help after the time of exposure and then testing for pregnant mothers. Next we have is hepatitis C in which it is transmitted through direct contact with infected blood or body fluids such as through injection or on drug use or sexual contact. It is an RNA type of virus. Infection for HCV can occur acute and chronically. So most cases turn chronic. Why? Because during the diagnosis for uh, hepatitis C virus, uh, the markers eventually uh, uh, persist during chronic case. So that's why it is very difficult to detect uh, the acute infection for uh, hepatitis C virus. So for the treatment, antiviral for chronic and then uh, multiple direct acting antivirals, our DAA. So for prevention, sadly we have no vaccine or post-exposure immunoglobulin but hand washing can be helpful to lessen the chances of transmission. Sharp precautions and blood testing will also help. Moving on to another type of viral hepatitis, HDV is contracted through direct contact with infected blood. Hepatitis D is a rare form of hepatitis that only occurs in conjunction with hepatitis B infection. The hepatitis D virus can multiply without the presence of hepatitis B. This occurs when there is presence of superinfections. So it is an RNA type of virus. Infection to HDV can be acute and chronic. Now for diagnosis, the presence of HDAG indicates that there is an active infection to hepatitis D virus while anti-HDV for post-recovery. So treatment for HDV is antivirals and our uh, DAA or our multiple directing uh, acting antivirals. And then prevention, hand washing, sharp precautions, and hepatitis B vaccine. To our last type of viral hepatitis, we have hepatitis E, in which it is a waterborne disease caused by the hepatitis E virus, or our HEV, similar to hepatitis A. Hepatitis E is mainly found in areas with poor sanitation and typically results from ingesting fecal matter that contaminates the water supply. These are very common in Asia's country. It is a RNA type of virus and once virus kicks in, it only occurs for acute only. So diagnose, uh, for diagnostics of hepatitis E virus, uh, presence of antibodies HEV can uh, indicate for presence of this virus. Treatment, supportive therapy since uh, this occur only for acute. And then prevention, hand washing, no vaccine. We don't have vaccine for hepatitis E. Drink, uh, drink clean water and cook meat. Now that we have been able to discuss the different types of viral hepatitis and its causes and the modes of entry, the two identified modes of entry, which is the fake oral route and the parental route. We will now then move on to the discussion of its pathophysiology. So again, uh, the virus itself enters the body uh, between the identified route. For hepatitis A and E virus, they enter the body, the human body, through the fake oral route. So again, tiba uh, na discuss kanina yung uh, infected food with hepatitis A or E virus. So as they ingest the food and complete digestion takes place, the absorption of nutrients, water, and the virus itself will enter the walls of small intestine through the capillaries. So tiba after digestion needed ng uh, na katawan natin ng nourishment so they will be uh, uh, enter the bloodstream again and then they will be circulated throughout the body so they enter uh, 
they enter the bloodstream through the process called diffusion. So they will enter the bloodstream, enter the hepat hepatic portal vein until they reach the liver. For the cases, uh, for the case of uh, hepatitis B, C, and D, they enters the body through the parental route. So let's say uh, the intravenously, so intravascular. So once this virus enters uh, uh, intravascularly, they are transported via systemic circulation. So as they enter the heart and travel down to the abdominal aorta, in which they will enter the liver. So those two routes will end up of entering the liver yes so hepatitis virus has high high affinity for hepatite uh, hepatocytes or to our our hepatic cells so one invasion so once invasion takes place it causes changes in the nucleus of the hepatocytes that will result changes in the antigen structure on the surface of the hepatocytes so meaning, it is not the virus itself that will harm the hepatic cells. It will only cause changes on its structure. But not in the case for hepatitis A in which it will actually damage our hepatocytes. So once changes occur, they, uh, the cells itself will release uh, DAMP that attracts hepatic macrophages. So, the immune cells will recognize the hepatocytes as a foreign body through the process called self-immediate immune damage. So they will attack this new hepatocyte. So there will be release of pro-inflammatory cytokines, our, our TNF, tumor necrotic factor, and the interleukin-1. So it will produce a react once there is presence of baremia. In, uh, that will cause uh, general immune response. So, magakaroon ng uh, flu-like symptoms, fever, headache, fatigue, anorexia, and vomiting, joints and muscle pain. So, kaya kung alam niyo, tiba, varimia pala is a uh, term when there is infection in the blood. So, yun nga. So, once uh, there is a, a damage or the hepatic cell itself will be destroyed by our immune system through process called apoptosis or necrosis and then fibrosis there will be a decline of liver function diba na mention kanina yung mga liver function natin so uh, our liver uh, our our hepatocytes who is in charge in converting unconjugated bilirubin to conjugated bilirubin there will be a decrease in its function since less naman or damage naman yung hepatocytes natin so less cb or con our conjugated blood it will or absence for chronic case ah, for chronic case stored in the gallbladder there will be defective conversion of of conjugated bilirubin to urobilinogen sorry sorry yes so in the duodenum so it will inhibit spontaneous oxidation of UBG into urob urobilin or UB. So, itong UB, it's, ito yung nagpapa uh, brown color sa stool natin. Kaya ganun yung itsura niya. So, for the case naman, nagkakaroon uh, ng darker urine um, uh, um, patient na may hepatitis, it's because Diba, damage na yung hepat hepatocyte niya, damage na. Kasi diba namatay, ganun. So, there will be possi uh, possible na mag-leak out ang conjugated bilirubin and yung unconjugated bilirubin, nag enters siya sa bloodstream. So, when there is high CB in the blood, it will be excreted through the kidney, through, through urine. So, yun nga, magkakaroon ng darker urine ang ang patient na may hepatitis. So when uh again tiba na mention yung uh, unconjugated bilirubin sa sa bloodstream. So when there is accumulation of UCB in the blood 
and it will be circulated through the systemic circulation it will not be uh, secreted through uh, the system why or through the urine because it is still in a form of non-water soluble lipid soluble pa rin kasi siya so UCB has high affinity for elastin so higher amount of elastin are found in the area of of our eyes in the sclerex uh, specifically and our skin is made up of also of elastin so the UCB itself uh, circulating throughout the body will bind to this elastin causing a yellow appearance so uh, kaya nga since mas marami yung uh, elastin na nakikita sa mata natin sa sclera mas mabilis na manifestation ang pag this ng mata kesa sa skin natin so medyo pangalawa lang ang, ang skin but sometimes hindi siya manonotice kasi nga uh, maliit lang changes but uh, it is important to uh, take note of these changes so again gusto ko lang i-highlight pala since I think may nakalimutan akong i-mention so since there is no UV yung UV kasi tiba yung nagpapabrown ng stool natin magkakaroon, makakakos ito ng uh, ng clay uh, or gray colored stool since wala naman yung UV na nagpapabrown sa, sa, sa stool natin kaya ganun yung maging color niya yeah and then for, for acute uh, viral hepatitis na gagaling lang siya ng kanyang anang ah, sarili niya with its immune system for case of uh, uh, chronic disease for uh, hepatitis sometimes when there is too much uh, scarring na or, on, or or there is too much damage on the hepatocytes it will really uh, lead to liver cirrhosis and and over time may cause uh, liver cancer yun nga so i hope you understand the explanation on uh, the pathophysiology okay moving on to uh, diagnosis for viral hepatitis again tip, na mention na kasi to ng kanina there are serologic uh, markers uh, that we can look into to check if there is infection for uh, viral hepatitis so uh, ex there are uh, uh, serologic uh, markers for hepatitis A B C and D but as uh, sadly uh, there are no uh, serologic markers for hepatitis E so again I mentioned ko lang bal uh, uh, mention ko lang ulit na if there is uh, infection with hepatitis A, uh, immunoglobulin M will indicate a uh, uh, present infection for hepatitis A virus. And immunoglobulin G for post-recovery. And then for HBV, uh, positive in H uh, HB sag test. And ah, you can read it on the screen now. So it's very explanatory na I, I think... And then it's already been discussed on uh, on on earlier part of the video. So uh, liver function tests, we can conduct a liver function test. So uh, once, because once uh, once the hepatocyte itself, it, uh, this uh, highlighted will uh, it uh, will uh, release uh, ALT AST. So yun nga, once the hepatocytes mag release siya ng ALT AST. So ma-determine dito yung uh, there, when there is damage to the uh, liver and then so the higher they are the more acute the disease is so white blood cells indicates infection so yun nga and then again the kuan uh, aside from from this diagnosis we can uh, physical uh, assessment will also uh, brief history taking yes it's very uh, it's a must so yun yeah in one well, terms of uh, physical assessment 
the mentioned general immune response to beremia diba? there is uh, just uh, check the signs and symptoms for uh, viral hepatitis and then there is we call this uh, uh, hepatomegaly there is the enlargement of liver cells due to uh, inflammation Moving to our last topic in which uh, the management for viral hepatitis. We've been mentioning a lot about the supportive therapy uh, on the earlier part of the video. So yun nga, for acute cases lang ang supportive therapy. And then for chronic uh, cases naman, we gave antivirals or our DAA, our multiple direct acting antibiotics. So sa supportive therapy we can give uh, we will advise as uh, part of our nurse intervention rest 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 in which it will help uh, reduces the metabo uh, metabolic demands of the liver so good nutrition high carbo high kcal moderate protein low fat except if hepatic encephalopathy present then moderate protein so avoid all eto eto all alcohol alcoholic beverage beverages diba na mention yan nga if syempre if uh, uh, hepatitis is present then uh, you uh, sige kapag inom madamage yun ang hepatic cells nato no so yun uh, steroid therapy is always controversial yes then antiemetics diba one of the alcohol and uh one of the signs was nausea and vomiting so yes for vaccines we only have vaccine for hepatitis a and b uh, virus so in which it will have uh, the chances of acquiring hepatitis a b and d virus so sadly we don't, still don't have a uh, vaccine for hepatitis c and e so that's it guys i hope you learned a lot from this video um i'm really sorry if sometimes there are really loud noise because again those are just things beyond my control but i hope you learned a lot from this video and if you have question uh on viral hepatitis or on hepatitis itself uh uh, please leave a uh, comment down the down below so that uh, I can look into it and then answer your questions so yes so don't you worry guys I'll be uploading uh, the materials and other supplement uh, uh, readings uh, supplemental readings for this uh, hepatitis so I'll be attaching also about uh, uh, autoimmune hepatitis and then the alcoholic hepatitis so that's it thank you guys for watching and thank you so much